Good afternoon and welcome to the Hamilton County Board of Commissioners April 20th meeting. We'll start off with introduction. I'm Odias. Lisa Berry, I'm Deputy Clerk. Christy Richel, Assistant Clerk. Stephanie Summerall, Newest Commissioner. Good afternoon, I'm County Commissioner Denise Driehaus. Jeff Aluto, County Administrator. Charlie Annis, Prosecutor's Office. And I'm Alicia Reese, Hamilton County Commission um, Board President. Uh, we start each of our meetings with a silent prayer, and a lot is going on, so we've got a lot to uh, keep in our prayers, uh, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, so we'll take a moment of silence. Amen. Make a motion to approve the minutes of the previous session. Second. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. All right. Uh, we have a proclamation recognizing Earth Day and uh, turn over to Commissioner Driehaus. Thank you very much, Madam President. Um, we have two proclamations. I'm trying to remember who is accepting the proclamations. Oh, Ralph Linney. Yeah and Brad Johnson. Um, please come to the podium, if you would. Um, we are delighted to be celebrating Earth Day, and we wanted to highlight some of the things that we as a county have been doing over the years, as Ralph would remind us, um, but also kind of ramping up uh, some of the efforts of the county. And so thank you both for being here, and we'll let you talk a little bit about your respective organizations and some of the new things that are going on, some of the things that have been done over the, a number of years. But first, uh, Madam President, I guess we want to read the proclamation and then have comments yes. from others. Yes, you mentioned two. Uh, it's the same proclamation oh, going to both. both. Gotcha. Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. Okay, so I will start. Uh, this is a proclamation recognizing Earth Day. Whereas the first Earth Day was created 53 years ago to acknowledge that individuals, governments, and corporations have a responsibility to preserve and protect our environment. Whereas Earth Day served as a catalyst for the environmentalist movement in the 1970s by bringing attention to several causes which helped push for the creation of the Environmental Protection Agency and the passage of the Clean Air Act. Whereas residents of Hamilton County first organized around air quality issues after the creation of the Smoke Abatement League, founded in 1906 by the Cincinnati Women's Club. The new organization pushed the city of Cincinnati to create the Office of Chief Smoke Inspector, which was the beginning of what is now the Southwest Ohio Air Quality Agency, a division of the Hamilton County Environmental Services. And whereas we recognize, and whereas we continue to face extraordinary challenges, including global health crisis, food and water shortages, a changing climate, unpredictable extreme weather events, economic inequities, and environmental degradation. And whereas through programs such as Mo Greener Program, which replaces older gas-powered mowers with cleaner and more efficient electric ones, Hamilton County has drastically reduced the formation of ground-level ozone. And whereas Energy Star, a branch of the US EPA, officially recognized five of Hamilton County's facilities in 2022 for their outstanding performances in regards to energy efficiency and only lowering energy costs and waste, but also helping to prevent the release of unnecessary greenhouse gases. Whereas the Hamilton County region, I, when I said greenhouse gas, I was looking at your green shirt and I got distracted. I, I apologize. <laughs> Whereas the Hamilton County region is currently in attainment for all U.S. EPA national ambient air quality standards. And whereas since 2012, Hamilton County has reduced electric usage by 26.1% and water usage by 38.3% 
proving itself to be a more than competent force against pollution and global warming through efficiency-focused and environmentally conscious policy. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Board of County Commissioners of Hamilton County celebrates April 22nd, 2023 as Earth Day in all of Hamilton County. And commissioners, um, I think I'll op open it up to the floor here and then um, have our special guest uh, say a word. Yes, so I will open it up, Commissioner Newman. Oh, okay, thank you. We know that, um, Madam Chair, that our environment uh, needs all the help it can get. People don't want to re recognize or acknowledge where we're going in that area, and we're going down if we don't go up, like you are doing with our efficiency in our Hamilton County uh, building. So certainly appreciate it, and also the work that you're doing. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. I want to thank you for all of the work that, uh, that you're doing. We've come a long way from the beginning and uh, a long way to go, and particularly in the uh, society, that, society that we have now. Uh, I talked about it when I walked out of my house. I was feeling very energized, and then I got hit with all this pollen, and it was like, oh, my God, what is going on? I can't even sit outside without a tissue uh, because of the sinus and the allergies and all those kind of things. So uh, the environment is so important, and the basic thing we have is our air quality. So we want to Continue to work on those issues, and thank you for all that you do. Yeah, and so with that, I'd like to turn it over to both of you. We really are making great strides here at Hamilton County. It's something to be proud of and something to acknowledge, uh, especially on Earth Day. So, uh, Ralph, why don't we start? Well, you've got the green shirt on, so we'll start with you today. Uh, thank you for being here. Yeah, I've been very pleased with the support over the years from the county administrators, the uh, commissioners in implementing plans to reduce the usage of electricity and natural gas in our buildings, along with the reduction in our usage of water has been very large, as well as the relationship over the 20 years I've been here with environmental services, us working together in certain areas as reduction in uh, waste in the buildings, uh, recycling, uh, them being a consultant to us in several areas. Also, uh, Holly worked with me when we wrote some of the initial uh, procedures or policies for environmental uh, policies back 20, about 15 years ago. <laughs> so there's been a relationship within the departments I think has been very successful. Thanks. Well, first of all, thank you. I really appreciate the acknowledgement of uh, Earth Day, Earth Week. So I honestly had jotted down a bunch of numbers and programs and things, but I kind of thought might be a little bit better to step back and uh, explain what Earth Day means to me being in the environmental field and uh, the environmental staff. So um, Earth Day kind of, uh, to get a little bit uh, phil philosophical, it actually represents um, something much deeper than just the numbers and the programs and what we do. Um, we, as an environmental environmentalist, we make a, a conscious uh, oath, I would say, an uns spoken oath to protect uh, the environment. And the staff, they do that both personally and professionally to the level of where, uh, you know, this most of our staff have master's degrees and engineering backgrounds to where if they worked in the uh, public sector, they could probably make double or sometimes triple the salary that they make. But, um, and I know I, I include myself in this, that we have made a, uh, a dedication to both society and uh, public service to dedicate our mission to protecting those things. And that's what Earth Day kind of represents to me and the staff. So I really just want to make sure I thank the staff. We have just such more than competent staff. We have absolute leaders. Um, and, you know, I, I've rolled some of those things out and I plan to in the future. Uh, food waste, I came to you last year, and the strides that we've made in food waste over the last year are just phenomenal. We are leading the nation in a lot of different ways. So just wanted to kind of uh, double back on the, uh, the passion and the drive that uh, the environmental staff have and just thank them and uh, thank you for acknowledging uh, the work that we do. I appreciate it. Thank you. I just want to just pile on just for a second. We did pass the solid waste plan 
uh, recently. And I do want to acknowledge that that is also a forward-thinking document where we are talking about organics collection, we're talking about universal recycling, we're talking about all the progressive things the county can do, EVs uh, related to the environment. So thanks for your leadership, Brad, and yours as well, Ralph, and uh, thank your teams for all their efforts. Oh, you're welcome. And just to kind of pile on to that, uh, the EV explorer. A lot of piling on going on. Is that, is that environmental friendly? <laughs> But so, yeah, it's just that I, I'm really proud to be the leader of uh, the environmental uh, department. And uh, again, just tremendous, tremendous staff. And we have a lot to be proud of. So thank you. Awesome. We're going to come around and take a photo. Okay, now we'll go to uh, public comments. Do we have any cards? Anybody on Zoom? No one? Okay, so now we'll go to the commissioner's comments and we'll start with uh, Commissioner Driehaus. Thank you, Madam President. Um, it's been a busy week, I think, for all of us. Um, just want to highlight a, a couple of things. We did do um, HC ARC's annual report on Friday, and we took a tour of the care pods over in the Justice Center. This is the build out. Uh, we are retrofitting a portion of the jail to accommodate 93 treatment beds for mental health and addiction services. It's a very forward-thinking approach to incarceration, and I am very proud that Hamilton County is on the cutting edge of this. Um, HCR had a lot to do with that in advocacy to the state government for the 2.5 million that helped us do that build out. And so we had a tour to let everybody see what we were talking about when it comes to the dormitory style setting. And then uh, we recognized that the overdose deaths in Hamilton County have decreased which is different than some of the other trends you see nationally and in other, other parts of the state. And so um, it's, it's a tribute to the community and to our approach to addiction, uh, which is one of trying to save lives and get people into treatment. So very proud of the work of HC ARC and was um, proud to lead that effort. Um, also went out to Montgomery for their health fair, first ever health fair in Montgomery. Um, it was a mental health fair, so it was really interesting and well attended and uh, another way to kind of talk about mental health in a way that maybe we haven't in the past and break down some barriers for people to access mental health care. Um, I also represented the commission at the Melrose Place opening. This is a residential facility. We were able to participate with home funds, $400,000. The city also uh, kicked in $400,000 with many other partners. And uh, it is a great um, asset to the Walnut Hills community. So I, I represented us there and, and spoke on our behalf. And then lastly, um, la was it last night? It was the night before last. We had the presentation from the Commission on Women and Girls. Uh, these are annual recommendations that come forward from the group. Uh, Mary Mounty, I think, is in the room. Thank you to Mary for helping with all things and helping getting that organized. Um, but it was a really um, special night. We had other presentations that night as well. Uh, but I'm really um, thankful for the commitment of the women and girls that served this year and the recommendations that came forward. They are very strong. They deal with things like uh, domestic violence, pay equity, period products. Um, they're, they're, it's very serious work and they did a really fantastic job. So I was grateful uh, to my colleagues for supporting those resolutions. But that was, um, that was a big culminating event of many, many hours of work from that group. So I just want a big shout out to them and a big thank you for their volunteer participation in that. Thank you. Great. Commissioner Dumas. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a couple things. And um, Commissioner Driehaus, as you mentioned about the addiction level going down, you said it a little fast. So when you said, unless you got that D, you, you might think, you said crease. 
I just wanted to make sure that people knew that it's decrease, a decrease, decrease in overdose not an deaths. Increase. So anyway, not to correct or anything, but I want people to know because you, you and all of us have been working on that. Um, and then another thing that's real helpful that you helped me with, <laughs> Commissioner Driehaus, because uh, my administrative assistant usually writes a list of everything I do during the week, and she put down that I was at the mental health fair. Well. I don't remember being at the <laughs> mental health fair. And so um, I was thinking, I need some mental health counseling or something. But anyway, what happened, it was in Montgomery. I was not able to make it, and I knew that I uh, was not going to make it because there's a legislative breakfast that comes up April the 28th that will hopefully all be there and participate in that. Uh, in addition, I, as was mentioned earlier, I did do the tour. Um, uh, went with the tour for the uh, care pods and just really great as you were saying and we all know it's out of the box thinking so that was excellent to be a part of that and then I had a meeting about the Brent Spence bridge which is a uh, millions and millions of dollars uh, billions it may end up being and so just to look at where we're going with the Brent Spence bridge and being uh, proactive as it relates to inclusiveness and diversity is extremely important. I also attended the Emergency Management Agency Executive Committee meeting, and we just have the best uh, director, Nick Crosley, um, and he's on top of everything in this county. And I tell him, along with our engineer, that when I go to sleep, I sleep well because I know they're right on top of it. So, And also I had a meeting with the Gensler Group, who uh, gave us this uh, $500 million project uh, for possibly uh, improving the stadium, um, the Bengal, well, Baycor Stadium, they call it. Um, that, um, and so we're looking at not only the improvements, but what additions do we want possibly for that stadium and whether or not uh, we can uh, streamline what's being asked so we don't end up, and the taxpayers, of course, don't end up paying a lot of money. Um, and then they had the Easter Seals beam signing, which I, I was not able to be a part of that, but they're having a great fundraiser in May that I plan on being a part of. Uh, and that'll end my report. Thank you. Uh -huh. uh, thank you. Um, quite a bit, and that's the, our commission board is very busy. Uh, we are, each of us are out in the community throughout Hamilton County. It's a big county. So mm -hmm. it's good that the three of us can sometimes split up and and sometimes we're together. Uh, a couple of things that I wanted to highlight. I uh, do want to join in uh, also uh, congratulating uh, Mary Maui and the Women and Girls Commission uh, and Commissioner Driehaus. Uh, that was very good. And one of the things I like about it, a lot of times you get on committees and uh, you give a report and it goes and collect dust. And we have not done that. We, as a board, have voted for actionable steps. And so that keeps people interested to know that their thoughts um, does become policy and we're able to pass those policies and put them in action. So very excited about that. Also was very excited to uh, acknowledge uh, with a proclamation at that meeting, at our staff, nighttime staff meeting, uh, the Cincinnati Black, uh, Miss Black Cincinnati, as well as Miss Teen Black Cincinnati, and Mr. Humphreys, uh, Robert Humphreys, who has worked in our juvenile system and retired for many years and has been in the military, but decided to start this program to help young ladies, and I think he's been doing it over 30 plus years, of young ladies to uh, have self-esteem and be positive and do community service. And so we got a chance to uh, acknowledge the 2023 winners and it was great. It was really great and they were very appreciative as well as honor Mr. Robert Humphreys and his wife for starting such a program and maintaining it out of their own pockets, uh, but as their way and their calling to give back to the community. So we're very, very excited to have uh, done that also, uh, I was at the Easter Seals Redwood uh, event on yesterday, and I was one of the speakers along with the mayor and uh, the governor and the CEO of Kroger's uh, talking about this expansion in Walnut Hills. And they were telling, talking about, you know, uh, 
they had no doubt that they wanted to stay in Wanted Hills. And this particular um, Easter Seals Redwood expansion would include a new veterans uh, facility for veterans, full service, one stop. And so many of our veterans have served our country, but when they come back home, there's nothing for them. There's nowhere to live, there's nowhere to work, there's nowhere for them to fit back into this society, and that's wrong. We thank them for their service, uh, but we gotta do more than thanking. And so the Easter Seals Redwood uh, new veterans facility will allow to have that one stop. And in my speech, I reflected on my grandfather who served in the Navy, and I wish he was alive today because he would tell these stories. I was a little girl hearing that when he came back, there was nothing for him. You're on your own. You got to figure this thing out yourself. And he wouldn't wouldn't believe that we have something like this. Um, so a very uh, congratulatory to Easter Seals Redwood. Our county also has done a youth resiliency grant to them. Uh, they also help our youth. And with all the violence that we're seeing uh, increasing, uh, my message has always been the same and it continues and I'm doubling down on it more. We must get our program to the youth before the street program gets to the youth. And that's why we're funding a lot of these youth resiliency grants and Easter Seal is hiring young people right now. They also hire people with a second chance. There was a gentleman there that spoke about uh, after doing his time, uh, coming out, and if it was not for this youth build program, he he doesn't know where he would be. He might be back in, but they showed him and walked through it with him, and now he's a supervisor, leader, has his own company, and he's helping other young men and women coming out uh, to be able to be productive. And he was the lead supervisor on the he is the lead supervisor on this expansion of the Easter Seals Redwood uh, project. Uh, and then lastly, they also help people with disabilities. I remember a young man I knew that had autism, and there's a lot of programs if you're young, but once you get to be grown, what is available for you to be able to be independent, be able to have a job, have that dignity? And I remember sending them over to the Easter Seals uh, program, and it actually works. So they do a lot with people with disabilities so they can be independent. So this uh, $25 million renovation campus uh, in Walnut Hills uh, is certainly well worth it. And I want to thank um, I think Pam Green, who is the CEO, who's doing a fantastic uh, job there. And a little note I told her, I said, you know, this used to be the Royals Skating Palace. It's known all over the country. And then it became Roller World for skating. So every time I go anywhere, they say, is that, how is it to be inside a royal skating palace? Uh, and I tell them now all of the great work that's coming out of that building to help people. So wanted to highlight that. I also had a chance to meet with Deer Park, uh, their administration, and just wanted to put it out. I know we have um, uh, we have funding that we put aside, and they've got guidelines and all those things. But a lot of times if we're missing something, I know the board likes to know if we're missing something, if there's something else we can do. We just highlighted the environment and going green. Um, they are looking to revitalize their park in Deer Park and it's around Silverton, uh, goes to Blue Ash. Uh, they have a great opportunity to uh, refurbish it with uh, walking and biking trails. Uh, they also want to put a pavilion where they can have uh, concerts for senior citizens and youth. And uh, unfortunately, they didn't meet whatever the RFP, we don't write the RFPs, but they didn't meet the threshold. And they want to know what can be done, and I want to know, I, I put that to the administrator and to Holly, what can be done uh, so that this beautiful park, green space can continue and be a place where the entire community around that area can use it. I know we put money toward, I think, bike trails and walking trails, and I've, uh, I've sent them back to the administration to see if there's some other things that we might be able to do to help Deer Park. Uh, we haven't done that much with Deer Park. We're doing a few things, but is there anything else we can do as it relates to this? I think it's a good project. Um, and I hope that we can figure out something to partner with them on. I uh, also met with the Taft Museum Artist Residency Program. Very excited. Love to hear the fact that we're going to move away from 
kind of the, when you thought about Taft Museum, it was kind of the elite. And uh, this is from the new CEO. And now they're talking about more of a community center where everybody can come and everybody can be a part of everything that the Taft Museum has to offer. So I'm very excited about that. I mentioned uh, Commissioner Dumas. You'll be happy to know I mentioned your program. I said Commissioner Dumas program that she uh, initiated with us and we supported. Uh, we're trying to get tickets for so that we can break those financial barriers. So I directed them to Director Patton to connect so that when they have programs, they can connect our, our youth to the Taft Museum. Uh, in addition, I also met with Mary uh, Huntington from the Greater Cincinnati Realtors. Uh, we had the Realtors here a couple weeks ago, and the Realtors want to be actively involved as well with the um, affordable housing. So I connected them with, uh, I just told them we'll connect them with Jeff. I also presented a proclamation on the Purple People Bridge uh, to the Duke Energy Line Workers for the Duke Energy Line Workers Appreciation Day. Uh, as I've said, when we have these natural disasters or when the lights go out, they tell us to get to the basement and stay in. But the line workers, they go out and they don't know what's out there in the dark. Uh, and we are depending on them to get the lights back on. And so we wanted to definitely uh, appreciate them as well. Um, also had a chance to give a proclamation to Donald Lawrence, uh, who, is, uh, who studied here at CCM and he is a world-renowned uh, gospel artist and started also at Southern Baptist Church. And he was in town for the classical roots. And also, uh, he wanted to see the Black Music Walk of Fame. So he got a chance to get a hard hat tour uh, as well. Um, and then um, I did also meet with Gensler and, uh, and our staff and wanted to just make sure that I, for me, my position is the same as it relates to uh, this, uh, the Bengal agreement that we have to negotiate. Um, it's gonna be interesting. I think it might be the first place in the country to have three women elected to a county commission that will be negotiating a major NFL contract deal and a stadium. Um, and I think that's important. The voters voted for us and I wanna make sure that it doesn't appear that we're just behind and someone else is doing all the talking and the negotiating. We don't want that impression. Uh, I have also uh, communicated to Gensler what we did in our meeting, that we need to get this information quicker um, so that it must be thorough because that's the only way we can make an intelligent decision and all options should be presented on the table. Um, and they seem to have agreed with that and then I asked the administrator to provide us with a calendar of a timeline that the people know, that we know, so that we can be as transparent as possible. Uh, because this is one of the largest, this is the largest investment of public dollars uh, into one entity. So wanted to make sure that uh, that was uh, highlighted. Um, those are just the highlights of what I, uh, some of the things I've been able to do just this week alone. Uh, tonight, a uh, young man named Dylan Morton, who's from Loveland, and he is uh, featured, he was on the Today Show this week, roller skater, and he also is uh, with Disney, the new Disney uh, series called Saturdays, and he will be hosting and directing uh, the portion of the Cincinnati Black Music Walk of Fame video shoot that includes skaters, and he will be doing that uh, this evening. So uh, he has been all over the news, uh, the Today Show, et cetera. But again, all this talent coming right here from Hamilton County. So just wanted to congratulate him and all that he is doing in a positive way. Uh, so those are my uh, areas that I was doing this week, uh, just the top highlights. Commissioner Dumas, you had something you wanted to add? Um, Madam Chair, I was wondering if I could add one um, item on before Jeff got started. Yes, go um, so uh, last year we allocated about uh, 750,000, 850,000 um, to d two different entities for large event grants. So at the beginning of the year, I asked my colleagues, could we look at 
um, communities outside of Cincinnati that are having small events, and then can we supplement them, undergird them so they can do what they do with little uh, amounts of money? So uh, the application went out for um, all of the entities to apply. We originally had three three groups, I mean, let's see, three, seven applications, and it went to 31 applications um, for small event grants. The maximum you can receive is $25,000. I'm sure everyone did not put in for 25000 but Madam Chair, the, the reason why I brought it up is because I would like for this item to go in our staff meeting for next week uh, to discuss um, the applications and who was accepted and, and also at the same time to ask for a supplemental budget appropriation uh, on Thursday because I had mentioned I already knew we would get more than what we had allocated, which is 250000 and I'm asking my colleagues to consider the possibility of additional allocation to fit the needs of the applications that have come in. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you. We'll mm -hmm. look at that mm -hmm. uh, calendar uh, next Tuesday or something, but I'll, I'll discuss that with your okay. staff. Okay. Um, and Mr. Aludo, uh, when you, um, in your comments, could you also address the, I didn't address the ODOT part, but the part that we had gotten, we had gotten declined from the Brent Spence Bridge. Um, and I know Mr. Beck is here, but then you said there was another step that we're taking. Could you include that in your comments? Sure. Yeah. Thank you. I'll hit that right now, um, Madam President. So um, the issue you bring up is that uh, the county had put in an a uh, application, maybe the, the wrong word, but we had requested um, uh, uh, cooperating agency status uh, for uh, the environmental reviews associated with the Brent Spence Bridge project, so the NEPA pro process that um, uh, the Federal Highway Administration and ODOT have to go through in order to build a federal project uh, requires a, um, a complex process to review all of the environmental considerations with um, an infrastructure project that big. So it happens under the National Environmental Policy Act um, and there is something called cooperating agency status, which would give the county uh, a seat at the table for directly reviewing um, the specific environmental criteria that are associated with its responsibilities. Uh, so from our perspective, and as the board has indicated, uh, we have a very specific role to play, as, as, uh, specifically as it relates to the Metropolitan Sewer District as the uh, principal of the Metropolitan Sewer District as a county sewer district. We felt very strongly that we should have that seat at the table. Um, so uh, we had submitted a letter to FHWA in that regard. Uh, they declined our request. Um, they uh, had uh, indicated that that role is typically reserved um, for uh, federal and state agencies, which have um, a direct role in um, in writing a portion of the NEPA review and, uh, and, and also those agencies that put, could potentially essentially stop the project. Uh, so we had a follow-up call actually today um, with uh, uh, County Engineer Beck and myself uh, and uh, one of our consultants uh, had, had a call with FHWA today, got some good information. I don't know that I uh, sense a, um, uh, since them changing their opinion on this necessarily, but they did offer us some options uh, to be more inclusive, to be more included in the process that Eric and I are going to get together and talk through and provide the board with some options and see whether we want to pursue one of those paths or whether we want to continue to press the cooperating agency path. So I'll be getting back to the board very shortly with some options here. Uh, we can decide where we go. Thank you. I appreciate that um, because we, we're getting a lot of people asking us to do this and do that and you can't really do it advisory is you know as uh mr beck said our engineer there's no teeth uh get we're good as long as we get along and agree but when we begin to not agree you know they only listen to the people that have any real power so uh, thank you for checking on that you're welcome uh so let's see uh two quick comments and then uh a slate of by leaves for you commissioners um, first of all, just um, uh, tacking on to the conversation on Earth Day, um, just do uh, for this Saturday, I do want to thank all of the 
uh, county departments specifically that um, have a role in doing something that helps protect the environment. Uh, and as the board knows very well, but the public who might be watching uh, might be interested to learn. You heard of some of them that were up here today, but um, everything from uh, environmental services, which um, oversees air quality and works on solid waste and recycling issues uh, for, for the county to county facilities uh, that is very directly involved with an organization of this size that has this many buildings. Um, the amount of energy and the amount of water that we use uh, absent the efforts of our county facilities department to steward that effectively, um, we would be much more impactful on the environment than we are. And Ralph and his crew have done a great job of, of, of keeping uh, our energy and water usage low. Uh, also, um, Metropolitan Sewer District, we were just talking about the impact of the Metropolitan Sewer District on the environment and the work that they are doing, not only as it relates to energy usage, but also uh, the impact of treating that wastewater, making sure that we're reducing overflows, that type of thing. And then uh, the Soil and Water Conservation District, which is um, also heavily involved with water conservation, um, with watershed management, with controlling soil and erosion, uh, or uh, controlling soil erosion. Uh, they um, are also a very heavy, uh, significant part of our environmental efforts. Uh, so I just wanted to note that, given that we go, are going into Earth Day this Saturday, that there are a lot of county employees who deal with this very directly. And this is a, a an, if the commission would uh, allow me just to uh, go down a bit of a rabbit hole real quick. I know Michael Patton, I think, is is here, uh, and he's also here with uh, John Nelson. John Nelson uh, is the prior director uh, of the Soil and Water Conservation District here in Hamilton County and has been poached, um, uh, a, fr a friendly poach uh, from Job and Family Services uh, who, to now serve as their operations coordinator over finance and purchasing and those type contracting, those types of things. Um, so I did just want to provide the opportunity very briefly, because uh, I know Michael has to leave in a minute or two. Uh, if the board would uh, allow me, just allow M Michael to introduce uh, John here uh, briefly. I know the board already knows him, uh, but you're going to be seeing more of him in a different capacity and thought this might be a good time just to allow for that. I appreciate it, Jeff. Thank you uh, for the opportunity. We're more than happy to have John. Uh, come aboard Assistant Director of Finance and Operations for Job and Family Services. Uh, for a little over a year since I've been in this capacity, we've had uh, that uh, that particular position uh, be vacant. And so I'm really excited about John coming on board. He was an exceptional candidate uh, and uh, led the pack in terms of uh, competing for that position. And so we've had some conversation over the last year uh, internally about where things stand as it relates to our contract, uh, fiscal, uh, our relationship with the auditor, and how that process works. So John and I have talked uh, really early on uh, about that process and really looking at and digging into that a little bit more closely to make sure that we have a, a really good workflow in place so that we are uh, consistently making sure that the contracts that we enter into with our uh, families and also just uh, general contracts we have at JFS uh, are, are being uh, met and, and intended to. And so we're happy to have John uh, brought him to the meeting today in a different capacity. So you'll be seeing more from John in that regard. So uh, John will be responsible for contracting. So Laura's on the call. Uh, typically, uh, Laura will report to John uh, as well as uh, you, you guys know Mike, Mike Hiles as well in fiscal. Uh, they will also report to John in that capacity in addition to information services and uh, building services work. So he's a, a broad uh, scope of responsibilities, but uh, he is uh, certainly uh, up to the task and we really look forward to having him on board at JFS. So thanks for the opportunity to in introduce him. Thanks, Michael. And I, I would, Congratulations. And I would just, I would just add, and, and those on county staff know that I'm always good for a good movie quote. Um, and I can say that when, uh, that there were a lot of jobs that were available that I know folks uh, in the county were, Thinking of John for, and I know amongst all, all of our executive leadership team, I think it was in Top Gun, where the words uh, uh, hearts are breaking across the world tonight uh, because John Nelson is off the market. Uh, so, um, so John, uh, glad Michael got you and uh, just happy to keep you here in the county. So thanks. Wait a minute, John, you got to get on camera. So they, when, when we send all the folks calling us to you, they'll know who you have a face. To. Congratulations. Did you want to say something? Um, Commissioner Reese, thank you so much uh, for the opportunity. I'm just excited. You know, it was uh, been an absolute pleasure serving this commission and our residents um, as the director of the conservation district and so excited to serve more people and uh, continue serving the commission in this role. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Congratulations.
Thank you. Thank you for that opportunity, commissioners. Um, and just. Oh. Or can we make a comment? Yes, yeah. Commissioner. Do um, Madam Chair, I just want to say for John, I remember meeting him when I first started as commissioner, but he's not only smart, but genuinely a nice guy. And so when I, t and that's important, especially when you're talking about job and family services, how do we relate to our people? And so I, I just know that you'll do a great job. So thank you for coming on. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Vice President Driehaus. My experience with John is very different from that. <laughs> <laughs> She's one of the ones crying, like, wait a minute. John and I, uh, when I was introduced with John, we were walking into a ravine in someone's oh. backyard uh, in boots, uh, trying to figure oh, out oh. what to do with this, this water run. I, it was a landslide situation. It was very challenging. So while I, I respect your position, uh, mine is different. But no, I'm, I'm delighted, John, that, uh, that Michael stole you away. Uh, you'll, you're great at whatever you do. So I'm delighted to keep you in the organization. Thank you. Um, so uh, Mr. Ludo, I'll take the appointments. You take the other ones. You, so you want to take the, uh, all the appointment yeah. items? OK, excellent. Uh, so let's see, a couple of by-leaves for you then, commissioners. By-leave number one. Uh, this is the resolution approving a zoning map amendment for green for case green 2023-01. This is the legacy living uh, project that you heard about in the public hearing on April 6th. This is from A2 residents to DD planned multiple residents. Again, you had a public hearing on this, uh, and the result of the public hearing was to have the uh, resolution advanced. The administration recommends approval. I make a motion to approve by leave. Second. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Treehouse? Yes. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Thank you, Commissioners. By leave number two is a resolution granting a petition for the annexation of 3.683 acres from Columbia Township to the city of, uh, city of the Village of Indian Hill. Uh, this was one that was on the agenda last week. Uh, this is a specific uh, area of the Ohio Revised Code uh, where the, uh, the annexing territory, in this case, the city of the village of Indian Hill, is annexing property that they already own, and they also own all of the abutting property. Um, we held it last week because we just, even though there is no real discretion for the board here, we just wanted to communicate with Columbia Township on this. Um, I did communicate with uh, their township administrator, Melissa Taylor. She was aware of it. Uh, she indicated that uh, Dean Manessi, the city manager uh, for Indian Hill, had sat down with them previously to discuss the plan of what they were annexing. So uh, she understands that this is on the agenda. So the administration does recommend approval. Okay, I uh, put a motion to adopt by leave two. Second. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Treehouse? Yes. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. And then, thank you, commissioners. And commissioners, uh, uh, Commissioner Reese, there is, there's one addition, absent the appointments, there's by leave seven. I'm happy to take that now if yes. you'd like to, sit for, uh, to be seamless. Uh, resolution number 12 is by leave number seven, uh, clarifying and reconstituting the Ohio Region 2 uh, Recovery Foundation Board. Uh, this is a by leave that essentially, uh, the main purpose of this is to allow for uh, the uh, appointment of designees uh, on the board for the uh, uh, One Ohio Region 2 Recovery Foundation Board. Uh, the administration recommends approval. Uh, I make a motion to approve by leave number seven. Second. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Driehaus. Yes. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you. Uh, by leave number three, four, five, and six deals with appointments uh, by this board. Um, and I do want to thank uh, the chief of staffs for working with uh, all of our offices on this. Uh, and we wanna also thank those who are willing to serve. And we have a, other board openings. And if you're watching, uh, you can go on our website and apply to serve on one of our boards. So we appreciate that. So by leave number three is a resolution appointing members to our Community Development Advisory Committee. And they are uh, Jack Cameron, uh, Adrian Wiley, Christian Davis, um, Godfrey Miltz, Dolores Peterson, and Kate Green. Uh, by leave four is a resolution appointing a member to the Tax Levy Review Committee, Eric Landon. By leave five is a resolution appointing a member to the Board of Zoning Appeals, Daniel Sullivan. And by leave number six is a resolution appointing a member to the Board of Zoning Appeals, Daniel Sprawl. Uh, is there any comments on any of these appointments? Madam Commissioner, I also want to thank these individuals for being willing to serve. 
Um, these are really important roles, and it, we, we appreciate all the volunteers that serve on all our boards and commissions. Um, so thank you to them, and also thank you to the chiefs for getting it together. It, it's not an easy task to keep track of all these things. So uh, my chief is Kevin Tai. I appreciate his work on this in addition to the other chiefs. Thank you, Commissioner Dumas. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, exactly what I was going to say, but I just, we don't want to understate the importance of being on a board of commission. You don't just come and listen and, and talk, but you can take action and sometimes change the direction of the commission uh, and its purposes and its goals when you participate. So please apply, as was said earlier. Thank you. I do also want to acknowledge our uh, clerk and assistant clerk for assisting with this as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve by leave three through six. Second. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Treehouse. Yes. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Thank you. Now moving to the calendar. Item number one. Mr. Beck, our engineer. Good afternoon. I only have one item today. Uh, item number one is resolution awarding the bid for project 502204 which is Sheed, Hanley, Weiss, and Gaines Road improvements located in Colerain Township. Um, we went out to bid on March 9th for this project. The engineer's estimate was $2,040,000. We had a low bid, a successful low bid of $1,929,215.70 by Rack and Ballauer Excavating. Um, so the good news is we were under our estimate. Uh, the funding for this will be uh, permissive auto funds in the amount of $1,029,215.70, matched by an Ohio Public Works grant of $900,000. So this would allow us to award the contract to Rack and Ballauer. Okay. Uh, I'll open up for questions. Vice President Driehaus. No questions. Commissioner Dumas. The amount of our savings was what? Uh, from the estimate, we saved uh -huh. about, we were about $100,000 low. $100,000? Thank you, that's all I have. We like saving money. We do. Yeah. I'll make a motion to adopt item number one. Second. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Driehaus. Yes. Commissioner Summer Dumas. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, now we move to the commission administration. These are our ARPA dollars. I just want to reiterate, uh, people would ask, what happened to the ARPA dollars? So every meeting uh, we break down each uh, grant that we are about to vote on to remind you what we're doing to get more information. So I don't know, Mr. Aludo, I'll let you do the introduction. Uh, uh, just to frame it exactly as you did, that uh, I think all the items that are on here today relate to our ARPA funding um, and relate to the commission's ARPA plan. Um, we spoke a little bit about some of these at the staff meeting on Tuesday that we were getting grants out related to uh, to youth resiliency in addition to some other things. Uh, and uh, we're doing a lot of these every single week. So a lot of money that we're getting out into the community to help with the impacts of COVID. So uh, Sarah Adams is here to uh, introduce these on behalf of the administration. Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, so I will be going over um, items two through seven. So our first item, which is number two, is a contract with strategies in homelessness for two million. Um, the board allocated $2 million in our ARPA funding to deploy grants to innovative approaches to prevent homelessness. Strategies to end homelessness will administer this grant on our behalf, and 95% of this funding will actually be deployed to organizations in um, the approach of grants, which is a really great amount. These funds are being targeted toward homeless prevention, housing stability, leveraging existing partnerships, and can provide a plan for ongoing sustainability after the ARPA funds actually have been exhausted with these funds. And we have Kevin Finn, the president and CEO, here along with me today to answer any questions you guys have. Thank you. Mr. Finn, would you like to say anything before we open it up for questions? I don't have anything to add unless you have questions. Open it up, Vice President Driehaus. I have no questions. Commissioner Dumas. I have no questions, just commenting that we continue to get monies um, for homelessness and we still need more and need to do more. So I, I'm glad that you're delegating those partners to fulfill our mission. These dollars are very unique in that they're targeted at prevention. Most mm -hmm. of the resources, people have to already be homeless. Mm -hmm. That's right. Are these I the- that They're already homeless. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, go ahead. 
Are these the dollars when you were telling us we would have something to let, allow us a little more flexibility because the other ones were not flexible? The ARPA funding definitely has more flexibility than, for example, the you know 28 or so million we get from HUD every year that has lots of restrictions on it in terms of how it can be used. Gotcha. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, we keep saying ARPA. And for those who are just tuning in, or we said it a while ago, we know what ARPA, can you just uh, let the audience know what ARPA stands for? Yes, ARPA stands for the American Rescue Plan Act, and these funds specifically are under what we call SLFRF, which is the State Local Physical Recovery Fund. Um, there is a lot of umbrellas under ARPA, so it is good to kind of know those different designations. Um, but we were allocated $158 million in funding, and then I'm the one who administers all of those contracts and funds in Hamilton County. So when we say ARPA, I know we all know it, but that is exactly what we mean when it comes to um, all of the funds that I'm actually presenting. Great, and you did a great job, and I was thinking, oh, I feel so bad, but I knew that you were equipped to, to give that information for whoever was listening. So thank, thank you. you, I appreciate that. <laughs> Item number two. Okay. Three. Item number three um, through seven is, or three through six, I'm sorry, is actually under our youth resiliency grants. We did several of them last week. We were actually able, um, we've approved nine to date. We're gonna do four more of them today. And then we have 14 remaining under contract negotiations. So we were able to do 27 um, under the youth resiliency fund with your guys' support and allowing us to move a little bit more funds to that. So we really appreciate allowing administration to do that. Um, this program supports the expansion of existing youth resiliency programs for ages nine to 19 to combat social isolation due to COVID. Item number three is with Girl Scouts of Western Ohio for 150,000. The program will serve 100 girls to bring Girl Scouts to local schools and community centers after school programs. The girls will experience indoor and outdoor activities. They'll earn badges, um, learn archery, and get to participate in the wonderful cookie program that I'm sure many of us participate in. Um, it will also assist 25% of their current participants in activities at no cost, such as hiking, camping, and um, address any transportation barriers for any of their participants. And we have Rhonda Sargo here, the Chief De Development and Marketing Officer, if she would like to make any comments before questions. Welcome. Thank you so much and thank you all for this opportunity and thank you for the funds to allow us to expand Girl Scouting to all communities. Um, our mission in Girl Scouts is to build girls of courage, confidence, and character so they can be up here uh, <laughs> in a number of years and know that they can do anything. So this money will help us to bring Girl Scouting to every community and remove barriers for girls who can't currently participate in Girl Scouting. So thank you once again. Thank you. I'll open Take it up. Any questions? Any questions, yes. Vice President? Yes. One quick question. Are you targeting any communities in particular with these dollars? So these dollars will go to our direct delivery, um, and we're identifying exactly which communities. We do direct delivery for about 2,000 girls in Hamilton County. So we're trying to figure out of those 2,000, which ones will we go into? They'll likely be within CPS, though. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner Dumas, any questions? Um, no questions, but thank you for all you do. And the Youth Resiliency Grants are purposely for mental health impact. And as we improve the, the mental health, we improve the confidence of girls and young boys. So thank you so much for what you do. Thank you. Thank you for all you do. I really right. appreciate it. Thank you. thank you. Okay, moving on to item number four. This will be at the Art Academy of Cincinnati um, for 70000 and this program will serve 2,500 underserved and minority students in grades 7 through 12. They will expand the A and WIR curriculum to local schools and recreation centers throughout Cincinnati, um, which is where they will train teachers to use the program and tools. This program is unique as it provides art enrichment to students who might not otherwise be able to participate in the program and learn about arts. Um, today, we have many people with us from Art Academy. Um, we have Joe... Garandola, the president, um, Linnea Garten, director of office engagement, and Tommy Ballard, interim associate director. Welcome.
I just want to thank the commission and Sarah for all the amazing work uh, that's been done for this youth resiliency process with our programming as a, an undergraduate college. We also run an amazing office of engagement that uh, this program is spearheaded by Lene and Tommy Ballard artists themselves. So they know the impact of what storytelling and creative skills do when you feed the soil with water and the right nutrients to make something grow into better and youth resiliency process that we've been experiencing, especially in our post COVID pandemic world is all about how we fuel the soul to be better human beings on this planet. So thank you for this opportunity. It's hard, always hard to follow Joe. Um, thank you, commissioners, for this opportunity to expand our programming in the artist and writer in residence, not only to um, support creative youth in Hamilton County, but also support the salaries of artists. Um, as you know, there's thriving talent in Hamilton County, and um, we appreciate the opportunity to support those artists as well as youth creative recovery. As um, like Joe mentioned, we um, exist in this post-COVID uh, world. So thank you very much. Hi all, thank you. Um, as the artist and writer and residence program manager, I wanted to ask if there was any questions about the program or the use of the funds. Yep, we'll open it up, Vice President. I just want to say that's very brave of you when you didn't do any of the presentation. So uh, <laughs> I have no questions, but thank you. Thank you for He's what you do. the brain of the group. That's right. <laughs> so Tommy is an amazing artist. He brought the program to us and found out. Wow. And so, you know, we have a small and mighty team, but as we approach Earth Day and what that means, bring these things to our students to get them out. So Tommy's led the process, and so we so, think he should be the best one. <laughs> OK, now, Commissioner Dumas, you oh, have the floor. Order. <laughs> but I knew uh, when I said he was a brains, but you know, to be artistic takes brains, too. So thank you all for, for what you do. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. I do have a question. Absolutely. Um, in terms of recruitment of artists, how do you are these folks that are already are artists? Or are we talking about young people that you're trying to, Absolutely. that they don't know if they have it, but could get trained to have it? Absolutely. Are you talking about the teachers or the students themselves? The students themselves. The students themselves. So the students themselves are really emboldened to be artists from the very get-go. So there's no delineation between non-artist and artist. Every student that we works with is, come. we come to them as artists. We, call them artists in the classroom. And there is no, you have to do this to become an artist. It's ingrained in them. So really, the beauty of the program is that we embolden their creativity, their critical thinking, and their collaboration overall. And with that, they're able to come to terms with their creativity and their imagination is in integral for their future. Awesome. Yeah. Now, on here, you say that um, this will increase uh, minority participation. Yeah. How do you recruit? Or Absolutely. So we work predominantly with Cincinnati Public Schools, okay. as well as Hamilton County Schools and across the Southern Ohio region. And with that, we use uh, data such as the free and reduced lunch program, as well as student statistics to make sure that our engagement is strategic to make sure that we are impacting students of color, students of economically disadvantaged students for the majority of our curriculum, majority of our time spent, we're working with students who do not have access, do not have the time in their school day to feel like an artist or engage in studio practices or studio projects as an artist. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, item number five. Um, this is with Flock Ministries for 198,487. Um, their program will serve 225 low income youth ages 10 to 18 living and or attending school in the Price Hill neighborhood. They will expand two after school programs and add more activities to build connections, increase hours of operation and add additional staff to supervise and mentor youth. They offer programs such as sports, outdoor activities, arts, recreation, tutoring, and healthy meals. Block um, promotes increased self-esteem, self-image, learned skills to de-stress. 
Um, I might need to learn a few of those. And emotional regulation. And we have Stephanie Russo, the grants director here, to make any comments before we go with questions. <laughs> yeah, my name is Chris Stacer. I'm the director of operations with Block. And on behalf of our board, our staff, and just community at Price Hill, we, we thank you guys. It's an honor and a privilege to be here in front of you, but also to be the recipient of your generosity. Um, our hope is to watch students develop resilience, but also to be a community that is defined as resilient. Uh, we love our neighborhood. We love Price Hill. We live in it. We raise our kids in it, and we're just honored to be here today. Thank you. Open it up, Vice President Driehaus. Yeah, thank you. Um, j just one curiosity I have. I'm familiar with Block. Is, is there any nexus between this grant and the horse farm? Is it a horse farm, horse facility yeah. Yeah. that you recently opened up uh, at the site where the old Quebec school used to sit? Yeah. So um, part of this grant is the farm to table and urban gardening part. So we just started a new horse farm two weeks ago. And we got three horses on site. We'll have six soon. So it will partner with that. So we just had a field trip with Cincinnati Public Schools yesterday there. So getting to see horses, getting to see bees, getting to, mm -hmm. get, to get their hands dirty. And so, yeah, it is part of that. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Commissioner Dumas, thank you for all you do. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, this is great. Um, with that program, I know this is the grant that we're going to give, but um, USDA was saying, I was at an event when they were in town, that there's a lot of funding available that we're not, I guess, connected to. So I wanted to make sure, are you connected with that? or? Yeah, we are, uh, we are in the process of accessing some of these federal grants, uh, specifically for the farm to table. Um, so we're in the process. We got a couple grant writers who are looking at that, Stephanie being one of them. Yeah, I have to get up here anyway. Uh, we did write our first federal grant and submit it um, just a few months ago. Come a little closer. They want to they they hear you on YouTube. I, I like being behind the scenes, can you tell? <laughs> um, we did write our first federal grant, and it's in the process of being reviewed So with the, um, with the Urban Garden. And as far as the funding through ARPA, Unfortunately, our Horses in the Hill program was not live when I applied in October, so we couldn't expand it. So in answering your question, we um, applied for funding to expand the, um, the garden program, which is farm to table, farm to school, uh, because that had le legitimately began last year, even though it was small scale. And we're ramping up this, this spring and onwards. But the Horses in the Hill was literally no horses, barn not finished. And now we can say, yes, you know, it is finished. It is ready to ramp up programming. So. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. I'll just ask, um, Mr. Lugo, we had a presentation maybe last year, end of last year, or beginning of this year, and I had asked about that, getting more uh, funding for Hamilton County. Uh, we had someone present that's with our organization. I can't remember who it was. So can we just make sure we connect them with the, we were trying to get some more USDA dollars. I think we were t that was related to a f uh, like a community garden or food composting yes, yeah. uh, matter. I think through environmental services. I think yes. Yeah. So and so we can definitely touch base. We are routinely now getting flagged by the Ferguson Group, which is our DC lobbying firm on anything, anything that comes out of of ARPA or anything else out of USDA, including some of the Inflation Reduction Act um, programs that um, also had some additional uh, agricultural things. So we can follow up on that. Yeah, I just want to make sure you guys are you. connected with us and we can be supportive. We need more of the agricultural dollars in Hamilton County. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Yeah. Thank you. And for our last youth resiliency, item number six, it is with Artworks for 224000 The grant funds will be used to expand their youth apprenticeship program to serve 230 youth age 14 to 19 to expand and employ youth to learn about careers and opportunities in the hearts or in the hearts in the arts sector they will expand three current youth employment programs the first is their summer youth program they will hire youth apprentices to paint murals create community installations and increase apprentice opportunities 
Their second one is their year-round gallery program. They will add a graphic design studio. And then their third is their year-round creative studios program. Well, they will add a second graphic design studio. So this is one where we might actually see some of those murals and different things that we're seeing now around Cincinnati, as these apprentices are the ones who actually create those works of art. Um, they will also be purchasing a van to overcome the transportation barriers that many of our youth programs are experiencing, um, especially pre-pandemic or post-pandemic, sorry. Um, and we have Jeff Sperry here, Senior Director with Artworks, if he would like to make a few comments. Welcome. Hi. I don't really have many comments, but I do want to say thank you very much to the commissioners for supporting youth across our region, and especially for supporting youth that work with Artworks. It really is a workforce development program, and while they learn about um, having future jobs and stability in the reason, region, they get to create amazing public works of art. Thank you. Awesome. I'll open it up for questions, Vice President. Yeah, from yes. This one too, thank you. Thanks for what you do. Thank you. Commissioner Dumas, thank you for all the great work. Thank you. Thank you for the great work. Um, I just want to say not just for this program, but for all of them, uh, we want to just make sure that Hamilton County is a partner and people who are in these programs, parents, students, they uh, know that this is a partnership with Hamilton County. Uh, I think we do a really good job as a city, but Hamilton County, people come to us and say, what have you done? And I'm like, wait a minute, look at these programs. So uh, just letting people know that this is, we're doing this in partnership with you. Thank you so and others, much. Not just you, right. but others too. Thank you. All appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and for item number seven, this is the last one on the agenda for myself today. This is under workforce development grants. Um, we have approved nine to date. We have the one today, and then I only have one remaining um, under contract negotiation, so we almost have completed our workforce grants. Um, this is an expansion of existing workforce development programs and one of the in six of the in-demand careers. Today, it's with Cincinnati State Technical College for 225000 they will utilize funds to expand their medical assistant apprenticeship program and serve up to 60 students, including underemployed and encumbered workers. One of the challenge to low income students in completing their degrees or certification is their abilities to not to be able to work while they're actually attending those programs. That's what makes this program unique in comparison to some of the others. They have, um, their expansion seeks to address this challenge by providing a six month earn and learn program. The apprenticeship model that allows students to gain experience at a physical practice while completing their medical assistance coursework. Um, so they will, all of their students will be able to work at least 30 hours a week, make $15 per hour while at the same time getting their certifications or their degrees. So that makes it a really unique and great program for all the students. And they have a 90% graduation rate, which is actually phenomenal. And we have Robin Hoopers here with Provost. Um, I think that may have changed on me now that I'm looking at my notes and I met people earlier. Um, so Cincinnati State, if you want to come on up and address any questions. Okay. Good afternoon. I don't have any comments to, to add to the substance, but I would like to say that I'm here on behalf of the, the college and President Posey, as well as on behalf of Health Collaborative. And uh, we're very excited about this opportunity. This program is something that um, we launched about a year and a half ago in, in uh, collaboration with our, uh, the health systems and those partners uh, working with the Health Collaborative. And um, not only do is there that Actually, it's been 100%, 100% graduation rate and 100% uh, uh, employment placement rate, but it's also 100% in their certification, and that's key for those individuals because that becomes a portable credential. It's their first step into the healthcare that they can then build upon if they want to go on into nursing or something beyond that. So we're very excited about this, both for the individuals that it will impact, as well as for the, the, the gaps that we have right now with medical assistance in our in our community. So we're excited because I think on both ends of that pipeline, it'll make a real difference. And, and on behalf of the Health Collaborative and on Society State, we thank you. Awesome. We'll open it up, Vice President Drew. Yeah, and thank you. Thank you for um, commenting uh, regarding this program. I think this is exactly the right model 
uh, because I, I know the challenge has been getting folks into um, programs where they can't afford to stay because they have to be working or, or you know, having some kind of income. So I think this model makes a lot of sense. Uh, and as you say, in a field where we know we've got a deficit. Um, so thank you for what you're doing. Um, happy to support this program. And Madam President, before we finish up with, we've done the workforce development, and we've done the youth resiliency, um, and this board has prioritized these areas for ARPA dollars, but I do want to remind everyone that the ARPA dollars came from the federal government, and we sometimes forget to thank the federal government um, and the Biden administration and the Congress um, for recognizing the needs on the ground post-COVID. And so here we are um, able to create these partnerships and support all these programs only because the federal government allowed us this opportunity to do so. So I do, I, th I, I forget myself, um, so I do want to Big plug to the federal government for the resources to allow us to do this good work in partnership with all of you in the room. Yes, thank you. I don't think we forget. <laughs> we, we forget to we, mention we them. We forget sometimes. to mention them, but uh, I was going to mention them at the end. But you're right. This is a partnership, though, between the federal government and then us because they released the money, thank God. But then we have to get the money to the people, and that's what we're trying to do today, we put them in the pots, but now we're trying to get it to, through your organizations, down so the people can touch it. They said, I've seen it on TV, but when is it gonna hit my, my doorstep or my community? Um, <laughs> when is it gonna help me? So that's why we want to take time out um, to have these presentations. So we, you're just not a number and a PowerPoint uh, that people can hear about the program, know who, who has the money and what are we doing with it? So uh, I, I certainly agree uh, because they're going to be asking us <laughs> when we were all at the White House, what did you do with the money? We released the money. So we do definitely thank uh, the Biden administration uh, for uh, helping to bail out the American people. Commissioner Dumas. Thank you, Madam Chair. We have a great track record of what we've done with the money and great record keeping, and we know that developing work skills changes your entire quality of life. So this is just really awesome uh, what you're doing. And as we talk about ARPA dollars, we have to, as a board, designate designate by 2024 what we want to do with the uh, dollars, and we have to implement all of it by 2026. The, uh, the one thing I don't want to happen as we're giving out all this money is that people get dependent on, they're not gonna get it again. It's a one-shot deal, um, and so we need them to be able to enhance um, their fundraising to be able to develop programs and and not knowing necessarily if you're going to get additional money. So we don't want people to get dependent on us, but it's great that we're we're able to do that. Yep. And I just do want to say about this, that's why this program is important. Uh, when you get out of here, you got a certification that you can use and take someplace. Um, that's critical. And I do want to thank uh, uh, Cincinnati State um, for that particular program. When this is over, you've got something that you can sell yourself with and get another job or start your own business. You're leaving with a certification in hand. And I think that's that's huge without having to put all this upfront money up. Yeah. And if, the, if I could add to that, yes. not only do you get that certification, even though this is an earn and earn apprenticeship type model where you're getting a certification that's an industry certification, which is portable, gets you, you know, any job in any healthcare system. But in addition to that, we've crosswalked that with credit. And so if a student wants to say, okay, I'm a medical assistant, I'm certified, I like this, but I want to go on and become an RN, a BSN, or beyond, that then translates into actual credit that moves them forward because we've crosswalked all those learning outcomes. That's probably more detail than you want, but that no, I love walks it. into a significant amount of credit that moves them forward for their next credential level. I think that's what's making our board excited. <laughs> that was great. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Yep. Thanks today. for letting me present today. This is awesome. Um, Commissioner Dumas, we have going to wait and see if uh, Commissioner Driehaus had anything. We're getting ready to vote, that's right. We're going to. No, I'm just ready to vote. We're, That's we're why I moved. Vote. Okay, well, I have a, I have a comment. Yes, ma'am. Where did she go? <laughs> Woohoo! Um, as far as the monies that were asked for by these particular entities, uh, did they get what they asked for, or do we have to um, 
decrease some of it or what? Um, out of all 27 entities, everyone received exactly what they requested other than one. Um, one that we haven't presented yet was decreased just a little bit, and that was just based off the eligibility criteria of that you could only request at maximum 225000 okay. or 40% of your annual income, gross income. So we wanted to make sure that we were aligning with um, – not giving giving what was respective to organizations with their annual income, but also um, giving that max so we could help as many organizations as possible. That's great, and that helps me a lot because I was thinking about the Girl Scout presentation, and they said they have 2,000 on their rolls. You can't help everybody, but I just thought it was a, a low number. But if that's all they ask for, um, don't think about asking. <laughs> But I, the grant I, is currently closed. Okay. I know, I know, but thank you. <laughs> that was a story. <laughs> thank you so much. That's all I have. Okay, uh -huh. thank you. Uh, I make a motion to adopt items two, two through seven. Second. Commissioner Reese. Yes. Commissioner Driehaus. Yes. Commissioner Summer Jimenez. Yes. Thank you all so much. You're welcome to stay. We have the most exciting meeting you ever <laughs> want to see. But I know if you have somewhere else to go or parking, uh, we understand if you have to tiptoe out. Yeah, Thank you, you know. so much. Just take the money and run. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, back to the calendar. Um, Mr. Aludo. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, we are holding item number eight. Uh, this is the uh, uh, the CRA uh, agreement uh, with McCluskey Chevrolet. We're holding it. We're checking on some uh, job impacts and notification requirements just to be 100% certain um, that we are in line with the notification requirements to various communities on this and so that we don't invalidate the uh, the incentive by, by not having complied with all the notification requirements. So that one is being held. Uh, then we're into the consent agenda. Madam President, I'm happy to, to walk through those very yes. very briefly as the well, as the board has indicated it to me last week. So. Walk us through and highlight the financial. Got it. So uh, item number nine is the auditor's uh, statement of financial transactions. Uh, item number 10 is a budget adjustment uh, in the Court of Common Pleas for uh, a state grant uh, at $424,000. There is the bids of... Uh, the, uh, the report on bids and contracts authorized by the purchasing department for $5.28 million this time. Uh, there's a resolution uh, for a, a legal services billing in the prosecutor's office at $11,521. Uh, there's the purchase of a uh, Dodge Durango in the uh, Hamilton County Sheriff's Office at $38,441. Uh, there is a resolution for a revenue contract. This is the uh, agreement between uh, the commissioners, the sheriff's office, and Anderson Township for police protection services uh, at 13.5 million over two years. This is there is item number 15 uh, is a resolution of a contract awarding an RFP for security services with NSG at various county buildings uh, for two years at 768,000. Uh, there is a, a resolution authorizing uh, the an invitation to bid. Uh, for gasoline uh, and fuel services at various county facilities um, uh, uh, to, uh, to two different firms. Uh, there, there is a resolution approving credit card usage in the engineer's office. There is uh, a grant that we are giving through environmental services for $14,643 to the Civic Garden Center uh, for uh, composting demonstration projects. Uh, items 19 through 29 uh, are all JFS uh, contracts. Uh, the vast majority of these are for foster care and group home uh, contracts. There is one on here, uh, item number 28, which relates to domestic violence education uh, through the YWCA. I raised that only because it was referenced at the uh, uh, staff meeting on Tuesday as we were going through the uh, Commission on Women and Girls report. Uh, women and girls report and then finally we have items 30 and 31 which are two grants that we are giving through planning and development uh, the first is 72,000 to silverton for some pedestrian improvements at montgomery and plainfield road and we have a home partnership agreement uh, uh, for four single family affordable housing units uh, in the uh, uh, in lincoln heights at three hundred thousand uh, dollars we also have the treasurer's report for march and we have one travel request uh, for the coroner, uh, one employee to Columbus, Ohio. Thank you. I'll open it up for comments or questions. Vice President Treehouse. 
Thank you. I just wanted to note item 14, which is the contract between the county, the sheriff, and Anderson Township for sheriff patrols. Um, my understanding that's a large dollar amount, it's about 14 million. Um, it's over a two year time frame, and I uh, just wanted to note it because of the dollar amount, but also we talk quite a bit about um, patrols and, and the contracts with the outlying jurisdictions. And so uh, this is one where I think, you know, it's it's a good partnership. I'm grateful to the sheriff for providing the service and, and grateful that Anderson Township will be the beneficiary of the contract. So I just wanted to point that one out and highlight it. Thank you. Commissioner Dumas. No comments. Okay. I would like to make a motion to uh, adopt and accept items number 10 to 33. Second. Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes. Okay. Any other comments? I just have one more thing, and I should have mentioned it at the top. Um, I was in Columbus yesterday um, with the County and Commissioners Association of Ohio, where there was a reception with um, members of the legislature, and they are closely tracking the sub bill that is coming out of. The House, or rather, is sitting in the Finance Committee, and um, we have been advocating, and Hamilton County included, for 100% reimbursement for Indigent Defense Fund and for an increase in the local government fund that was cut quite a few years ago um, to the detriment of what we have to offer here in Hamilton County. Unfortunately, the governor's budget got changed. Uh, the governor's budget included these things. Um, the House budget has reduced the indigent defense reimbursement from 100% to closer to 76%, which would be a huge financial hit to Hamilton County. And in addition to that, the local government fund through uh, the governor's office was at 1.7, um, and we were hopeful that that would increase in the House version. It did not. It remained at 1.7. So just an update regarding that. Um, we were up advocating to the legislators to take a look at those two items to the benefit of the county, um, because otherwise, you know, as they decrease the general revenue fund, which they are doing through a tax cut, um, not only will the LGF not grow because the number didn't go up, but the, the fund that they, it draws from is going down. So we're going to have some budget, have to have some budget conversations if we can't get some forward movement um, still in the House or over on the Senate side. So I just wanted to um, mention that because it's an ongoing conversation and ongoing advocacy um, is happening from all of the counties throughout the state. Thank you for the update, Commissioner Dumas. Um, Madam Chair, I was just thinking about what Commissioner Driehaus was saying, and when we had our meeting with the legislators and they came down, we mentioned to them how important the local government fund is uh, for us, and uh, I know they are they are also lobbying for um, making sure that we get what we need. That's all I have. That's all you have? Good. Well, I have a motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> Commissioner Reese? Yes. Commissioner Driehaus? Yes. Commissioner Summer Dumas? Yes.